we're going to eke out less than another 10% by running it through PNG Crush, uh, which, let's see here. So we're going to search for files with dash NQ8 in their name. So let's just go with uh, appending something and we'll, we'll remove the name in a little bit after we're done. Uh, so I'll add dash final dot uh, PNG to the name. So it's going to be pretty wacky. It's going to be, uh, yeah, but that's okay. We'll, we'll sort it out. Okay, so this probably won't take as long. Uh, looks good. Let's do it. Okay. I know I said it wouldn't take as long, and it won't, but it's still probably taking too long to watch, so I'm going to pause here. Okay, let's see. So we were at 38 megabytes, and now we're up at... So uh, so we went from 23, and then from 23 we went to 15, and now after running PNG Crush, it looks like we're down to about 14. So, uh, so now what we want to do is we want to go through and uh, move the dash final dot pngs to the just dot pngs and remove the the, uh, the the third file, the intermediary nq8 dot png file. So, so we've compressed it quite a bit. So now uh, the loading should be you know substantially faster. But first, before we check that, let's make sure that when we zoom in, it still looks dynamite, and it looks like it does. I mean, I'm getting pretty darn zoomed in here. It's about as zoomed as it's going to go, I think. Let's just, yeah, it's not going to zoom more than that. Okay, so you can see the tiles load as needed, et cetera, et cetera. Um, realistically, I don't want to zoom in that, I guess. There we go. Okay, right to the edge. Fabulous. Okay, looking good, looking good. Uh, Let's, uh, let's do a little performance testing. Okay, so here we have, uh, once again, I'm going to pull up our friend speed limit. And uh, always remember to click that unlock thing. It always takes me a couple seconds to figure that out. Okay, so we're going to slow ourselves down to the speed of a 3G network. And we're going to load, first we're going to do this, this is the... Uh, the speed for the for the overlay, the ground overlay from before, where we're loading the whole image. 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000, 4, 1,000, 5, 1,000, 6, 1,000. It's kind of usable now, but it's still loading 7, 1,000. So if I scroll around, it'll probably be... Yeah, it's kind of wonky. Okay, so... Um, yeah, it's not even lining up right now. Uh, Oh, because I've been moving it. Yeah. So as you see, there's all sorts of problems here, and it took it took way too long. Let's just uh, cut right to the chase here. If we go to the tile demo, which is what we just coded up, let's see how this does. One one thousand, two one thousand, three one thousand, and it's done. And it works if I looks nice if I scroll around. And of course, you know, just to make sure, once again, let's uh, zoom way in, and you can see that. Stuff still looks pretty nice. You can, you can still read everything. Okay, so uh, there you have it. That's improved performance. Now, there are still some things we definitely need to do. Um, and the next thing we want to look at is making our tile overlay blend in a little better with the map, have this edge be a little less jarring. You may want it to look like an overlay, depending on your use case. But in my case, I would like to see a little more uh, continuity. I, I want people to not realize necessarily that they're looking at something that's plastered on top of a Google map. So we'll talk about that next. We now have our maps nicely tiled and loading quickly. And now what we want to do is match up our overlay color palette and the underlying Google Maps color palette. Now Google Maps provides an API mechanism for selecting colors, uh, for, for providing colors for various features. And if you look at our code here, parts I'm highlighting, so first you select an arbitrary map ID, you can call it whatever you want, it doesn't really matter. And 
here we have a map style. So what I've done is I've converted all landscape features to this green. Note, note that it uses HSL, not RGB. Um, we'll, we'll actually get into that in a little bit. And I've changed the roads to white. And the reason I've changed the roads to white is so that you know yellow freeways will, especially here on Mission Bay, this white freeway that we have, I want it to meld nicely with the white freeway that they have here. We create a styled map, and uh, this is this is the tiling we had that before, and uh, but then down here at the bottom we set the styled map we created to our map. And as you can see, you know, so you know the corner of our tiling cuts off this road here, so I, I should either make that transparent or. Uh, you know, get the road into the image somehow. But this is useful for our purposes because you can see if you scroll over here, you can't really tell where the tile ends and begins. Now you may think that what you do is you open up your, you know, tile, you know, your your, your master image that you generate all your tiles from. You say a color sucker from uh, Photoshop or Pixlr or whatever, and uh, get the HSL value and plug it into to here and uh, it works, but actually that doesn't quite work. What happens instead is that Google Maps uses that color that you provide to, to generate its own palette that's just a little bit off from what you selected, you know, because, because they need, say, six colors and you're only giving one. So the way you deal with that, if you want to match exactly like it does on this map, is you take a screenshot. Well, this is this is how I did it anyway. If you know a better way, please tell me. But you take a screenshot, and you uh, you know of the of where it doesn't match, and you know the border between the end of your tile and the start of the Google Map. You open that screenshot up in Photoshop or whatever, and use the color sucker to figure out if the saturation is needs if if the saturation that Google Maps is generating is higher or lower. Uh, than the saturation you want, and if it's generating a higher saturation, then you need to lower the saturation you're providing. And then the same for the lightness. And it takes it can take like maybe a half a dozen iterations to get it exactly right. 